RVing is fun. It is. It is for most people. I mean, millions of Americans do it. But when there's an issue with your RV and it needs to go back to the dealer for service or warranty and repair work, that can be most frustrating. If your RV is still under warranty and it ends up sitting at the dealer, the clock is ticking away. It is on your remaining warranty. And obviously, you're not able to use it while it's at the dealer. Now, another issue you may run up against is the old blame game. If you're unfamiliar with it, you likely haven't RV'd for very long. Up now is a portion of an interview I did with someone who is an expert in the blame game. And we discussed some common situations that may seem to be just uh, practical common sense and how oft times in the RV world, not so much. So if I, as an RV owner, I say, well, you know, that, there's a problem with that Schwintech system on my slide out. I mean, I'm not an expert, but I think that there's a problem with that. And I think it's under warranty. Can the dealer go, oh yeah, that's a warranty thing and we can take care of it. Or does the dealer have to go to the manufacturer and get the blessing from the manufacturer? Is there, you know, I, I know that when I take my car to a dealership, they say, oh yeah, we can fix that. It's a warranty issue. Don't worry about it. Is it the same way with RVs? No, it's not the same way because when you've got a car, you've got a franchise agreement between the manufacturer of that car and the dealership. And part of that covers what happens when it comes to warranty repairs. The dealers automatically go ahead and start the warranty work and figure out what's wrong. And if they need the factory help, then the car dealer will get them involved. It's practically the opposite when it comes to an RV. Basically, they've got to get approval before they can start doing the work or else they have to eat the repair costs themselves. So the industry has set up a mechanism, so to speak, that actually makes it harder for the RV owner to get service done and harder for it to happen quickly when it does get done. In terms of if, if I have some elective things, some upgrades maybe that I want to make on my RV and I have a warranty issue or two. I've heard that it is not a good idea to combine those work orders and to only take the RV in for the, for the warranty work and don't add in these extra things. Talk to me about that. I don't know, that may be a rumor, it may, you know. No, that's absolutely true. And the reason is not because of the practical aspect. The practical aspect would just simply take it in there and say, hey, I need you to change the oil or do this or that or the other, you know, adjust the, this, that, and the other. And oh, by the way, I got these three defects to get fixed. That's the practical side of life. That's not the legal side of life. Because what happens is those days that it's out of service, those start to add up. And when it gets to a big enough number, then you can say the warranty was breached. But the way that the courts and the law look at it is, if you're in for three problems and two of those problems or even one of those problems is just a maintenance kind of an issue or something you're having done that isn't warranty, then the days it's sitting there are not going to count. So you really? need to do those things separately so that your records are crystal clear on how much warranty repair time that was sitting in the shop. Otherwise, you're going to end up arguing about it and you're going to lose that argument practically every single time. Something I'm hearing an awful lot about, I mean, more and more every week is these people that have bought primarily grand design fifth wheels over the last couple of years, and they have cracked frame issues. And they're wondering what the hell is going on. There's not a, a recall, I don't think, on that unit, the ones that have these cracked frames. Have you heard much about this issue? And or is that something you can address or? Yeah, I've heard a lot about those, but they, the ones we're hearing about are actually keystones. Uh, but the the supplier of the chassis is where the problem originates, and there are cracks. And I've not seen a recall, but I've seen a number of dealer bulletin alerts where they tell the dealer, "Hey, if you see this crack here on the body, then it means the frame is cracked because it's putting stress on the box now." And you, they then tell you to go ahead and fix it. But what they're saying for the most part to fix is the body. But the problem isn't the body. The problem is the chassis. That's where the crack is that stresses the body that then creates more cracks. I've heard things where walls actually lose their fastening to the floor or the ceilings and they start shifting. 
cracks appear inside the RV's walls or inside interior walls, for that matter, not exterior walls on the inside. But uh, isn't this a cracks safety that issue? The fifth wheel. Isn't this a safety issue? I mean, I would think that if I've got a fifth wheel and I've got a cracked frame, I may not even know it. That's one thing. But driving down the road, moving it, I mean, that, that could put my life in danger. It depends on how big the crack is. And the other side of it is you got to remember that these warranties, for the most part, are going to be a one-year warranty. And the problem with that is these problems of the cracking, you're not going to notice the crack because that chassis is hidden in such a way that you've got to know what to look for and crawl under it before you can ever even have a chance of spotting it. Where most people are spotting it is because the body itself starts to crack. And when that does, or it separates from the floor and such, when that begins to happen, the crack's already there. And at that point, if you're beyond the one-year warranty, guess what? Are you telling me that if I spend $100,000, give or take, on a fifth wheel, and I've owned it, and I've, I've made the payments, everything, everything's great, like it, but I'm noticing these problems, but it's out of warranty, and I learned that I have a cracked frame, and I'm out of warranty. There's nothing the manufacturer has to do to help me. I'm stuck. Let's put it this way. Legally, the normal claims you would have, you won't have. And the reason is because the warranty expired without you giving notice to the factory of the problem. One of the fundamental differences between RV warranties and car warranties is with the car, the car is covered. With the RV, your complaints are what get covered. So if you don't know there's a defect going on, how can you complain? And when the defect finally raises its ugly head after the warranty is expired, well, that's why schmoozing comes in. Yeah, but a manufacturer, if they say, well, you know, <laughs> there's too many of these things. I mean, I would think that that would destroy a manufacturer's reputation. Absolutely destroy it. You know, somebody that makes a, a great product and it's not the manufacturer necessarily of the RV. They just assemble these, these things and put them out there. It's the manufacturer of the frame that did something wrong. and But at the same time, I, I can just hear what the manufacturer is going to say. Oh, you must have traveled. You must have been overweight. It's all your fault. It's not our fault. It, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's, it's oh, a yeah. game of blame placing game. That's exactly what it's like. You know, you, you've got the dealer that the customer goes to and the dealer says, hey, I didn't build it. You need to call the factory. You call the factory and they're going to say, hey, that's not our chassis. We bought that from these people over there. You need to call them. And so while all this runaround is going on, that warranty clock is ticking, ticking, ticking. And if you don't get it in the shop and make a record that, in fact, you tried to get it repaired, then you may have that clock run out on you. And then you may well be stuck. Now, that's where the schmoozing comes in. And a lot of these factories, they're not turning their back on it so much as it is they're giving a Band-Aid fix. And the Band-Aid will get you beyond the warranty a little bit farther, but what happens down the road is a whole different ballgame. But Mr. Burge, I'm seeing YouTube videos and a lot of people that are that have done what you're saying. They've schmoozed. At least they say they've schmoozed. And, and they've contacted the dealer and the manufacturer, and they've jumped through all the hoops. And essentially, they're stuck. It's like, well, tough. You know what? It's you know, it's out of our hands. Yeah. And and these people owe for another twelve years on a hundred thousand dollar fifth wheel. It makes no yeah. sense to me. Why? Yeah, is and that's exactly up? why. Well, that's exactly why they need to get to a lawyer before their clock runs out. They need to they need to be ever conscious of possible problems. Checking out their RV as soon as they see a problem. Get it into a dealer, and if they start getting horsed around, don't delay. Get to a lawyer. you got to get to the lawyer before that clock runs out on you. Because afterwards, it's, if, you, if you can't schmooze your, yourself into getting some relief, and the lawyer can't do it for you, and sometimes we can, but if they can't, you're, you're going to be stuck. and You're not going to be stuck in a good place. It would seem to me and this is a pain in the butt for sure for every fifth wheel owner, but it would seem to me that if, if I've got one, when the weather's right, get down underneath it and spend some time and look at every weld and look yeah. underneath, you know, and, and take your phone, iPhone camera down there and take pictures if you've got a situation. 
like you said, many, these cracks didn't just um, all of a sudden poof, they appeared. They appeared a long time and it takes a long time for some of these, you know, like a little spot on a windshield that takes a while to run its way across. Even if you're going, my, my RV is fine. My fifth wheel is fine. It may not be a bad idea when you're at the shop to have the dealer or you get underneath and look at every single stinking joint. Yep. And if, and if you can't do that or you don't have time to do that, then get a professional to inspect it. One of these RV inspectors who have been certified or been doing it for a while or whatever. What are those people who know what they're doing? And have them go check it out. And frankly, when you, when you consider the fact that the warranty is only one year long and the only thing that's going to be covered is what you actually complain about, and then it's got to be still covered by the warranty. But if you don't complain, it don't happen. It's not legal, so to speak. I would strongly recommend that when you get right around nine months of ownership, have that RV inspector go over that RV with a fine tooth comb. And anything they find wrong, get it into the shop and get a repair order made so that it shows you were there in tune. If you don't do that, you may not see that problem arise until you get around month 13 of ownership. And that won't do you any good. I want to be clear. Most RVs are not junk. They're not. Now, will they fall apart? Yep. And all of them will. They will. And if you don't maintain it properly, they'll break down more often. While very few RVs are actually qualifying as lemons, Ron Burge sees the worst of the worst in the RV industry, and he's seen it for more than 30 years. I think that hearing about the real possibilities of what could happen is important to listen to and consider following Ron's advice. As for the, the uh, cracked frame issues that we seem to be hearing a lot about on social media, all I can say is it's a mess. It is. And it's not good for anybody, not for the consumer, not for the dealers, not for the manufacturer, the broken frames. It ain't good for anybody. I do have a suggestion, though. I want to leave you with this today. If you own an RV, whether it's a fifth wheel or not, inspecting it from underneath is never a bad idea. Is it a pain in the butt? Yep. Do you have to do it? Nope. But spending a few minutes on your backside looking up. Or having someone who knows what to look for could just possibly save your life. So here's a question you may be able to help me answer. When your RV's underbelly is covered with that thick black material where nothing is exposed, how can you possibly inspect what's hidden behind that protective cover? Hmm. I hope today's video gave you some things to think about. If you think you may have a lemon RV, Ron's law firm will give you an evaluation for free. They will. A link to that is in the description down below. For now, the wingman is out of here. I'll see you again soon.